You know you're black when you cancel plans when it's raining. You know you're black when you wear a tall tee. You know you're black when you can go to a cookout late and still be early. Yo, where do we come up with these? What was your digital footprint like before black Twitter? Whew. Black voices. Black planet. I spent a lot of time on my space. The Twitter was different. Are you talking all that? So you've worked in the narrative space a lot. Yeah. What drew you to documentary this time? To me, it was trying to find something that scared me again, to be honest with you. I mean, and I read Jason's article uh, in Wired Magazine, and it, I, I'm already in love with black Twitter, but that just made me really realize how important it is to tell our stories. So many times in this country, as you see in real life, like, you know, like books are getting banned, things are getting banned from classrooms. And so it felt super relevant to be able to document our contribution to the platform and to the country in general. This is a three-part series, correct? Okay, why three parts and will there be more? Uh, I don't know if there'll be more, but Jason kind of wrote the article in three parts, and so it felt like a natural kind of coming-of-age story, where the first episode is kind of like more the youth of black Twitter, and two or three of the more the adolescents to being like a, a grown woman on the platform, for sure. A lot of great people worked on this project. Uh, who were you most excited to work with during this project? Oh, man. I mean, actually, all of them. I mean, guys like Van Lathan, Jamel Hill, um, but then other people like Wesley Lauer, like other journalists I talked to, Brad Jenkins that worked for Obama. I mean, you learned so many di different things from so many different people in walks of life and the way they contribute to Black Twitter that it was always learning something new every day, for sure. What do you want people to take away from this documentary? I really want people to take away that our contribution, not just to the platform, Platform, but to the country in general was not only necessary but was important in terms of creating social movements and, and, and really holding people in the country accountable. This thing on. Black people bring value to every place we gather. Now, come on. We move the culture forward. We did it, Joe. Come on. I do know one thing is that when <laughs> Black Twitter showed up, now, come on. It was at the most important time. <laughs> we can kick you all we want, but when you're black, you can't avoid the realities of this world. And I might never come down. It's way bigger than just fun and jokes. We used it to create change intentionally. So what drew you to this project, Joey? Um, so I was drawn to this project because I had spent many years as a lurker on Twitter. I'm not like a, you know, I don't like to tweet, but I was very active in terms of like watching it. And, and, and when I read Jason's article, it was the first time that I had sort of realized how prolific um, this community was in this digital space. I just wanted to be a part of something um, and to document something that I felt was really important, but that was in this um, digital space where it could disappear. So that was what drew me. What do you think the biggest thing was to come out of Black Twitter? Oh my gosh. I mean, it, it's hard to put, you know, what, just choose one one thing. Um, I think probably that most people all know about would be Black Lives Matter, just the how 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 that's gone around the world. And it's not just an American thing, but it's it's actually like a global thing um, that's empowered so many folks around the world. So that would probably be the biggest. This historical record, you could turn it off like that. And I might never come down. But as black people always do, we don't die. We multiply.